Mic check. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, happy Sunday morning to you. Feliz Domingo por la mañana. Pastor Jose and Patricia want to welcome you to New Beginnings Church of the Big Band, where we honor God, love family, serve others, and pursue excellence. Yes. Amen. A church you can call home. Amen. Yeah, so praise God. Lord. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia Nuevo Comienzo. We want to welcome all our NBC family. We want to welcome all those of you that are joining us by audio and video. Yes. Prepare yourselves to receive. We have a, a special guest for you today, and I'll introduce him here in a few minutes. But first of all, I wanted to say happy anniversary to NBC. Ten years, amen? Going on ten years. So uh, we just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for your love, your prayers, your encouragement, and your support. Amen. We're excited for another ten years, amen? Praise God. Uh, I'm just believing that God is not finished with us. God has great plans for us. God has great blessings for us, amen? So praise God. And he's got that for you also. he got great blessings for you. Yes, he does. Praise God. We just... We just uh, have to continue to serve him. Amen. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'll just give you a heads up. I'm going to be talking about growing and going for Jesus in August. Amen. That'll be our first Sunday in August, August 7th. Amen. Yeah. So praise God. But anyway, just prepare yourselves to, re to receive what God has for you. Amen. Yeah. Woo. There you go. Happy 10th anniversary in your beginnings church of the Big Ben. Thank you to all. Amen. So praise God. Let's go ahead and uh, open up with our uh, declaration amen there we go let's say it like you mean it now all right. amen all of us you know yes. you have mouth and you can speak say it amen, amen. it's up there for you to read amen. so this is my declaration this is my bible i am what it says i am i have what it says i have i can do what it says i can do today i'll be talking the word of god i boldly confess my mind is alert my spirit is receptive and i'll never be the same in jesus name amen i just uh wrote something down here in the bottom says the church alive is worth the drive the church alive is worth the walk is worth the visit amen so we're alive with the word of god amen with live word the word of god amen so praise god prepare yourselves to receive thank you lord and uh i'm going to introduce our guest speaker right now you've seen him before some of you have seen him before Anyway, his name is Ryan. He is uh, works at uh, EMS. He's always helping those that are in emergencies. <laughs> so praise God, and he is also uh, uh, an ordained minister of God. Amen. So I want to introduce him. I want him to come up. Ryan, come on up. I know God has spoke to you, and you got a, a great message for us to receive. Amen. And you prepare yourselves to receive what God has given him. Amen. Amen. So praise God. That's my hero. Bend <laughs> this way. Okay. Too much talking. I'm gonna use this. This is my first time ever using one of these things. Are we on, Carmen? Can you hear me okay? Huh? Can you hear me? <laughs> Hello. There you go. Huh? You got this thing. You got it. Go for it, brother. You are. Lord. Get out of your way. Okay. It's always a privilege and honor to be here in the presence of God, but to stand behind the sacred desk here that <laughs> Pastor allowed me to fill in for him today. And preparing for this, I've been thinking about this for a long time. God has kind of showed me different things in my life as I've been growing up and different things I've been doing. And throughout my life, I can see how God has guided me and changed me and molded me and had things kind of orchestrated by Him to get me to where I am today. I'm not complete yet. I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. The title of my sermon today is My Jigsaw Life. Amen. So how many of you ever put jigsaw puzzles together? You know, I... I pride myself in being a master of jigsaw puzzles. You know, what to say three to five years? I can get those done in a couple, three weeks. I mean, it's not complicated. Except it, it, it takes people three and five years to put some of these together. I, I do it in a couple of weeks. I don't feel so complicated about it. But. Anyway, if you'll think about your life as a jigsaw puzzle, 
Every part of your life is a little part of this puzzle. And when I put a jigsaw puzzle together, I always start with the outside and work my way in. But sometimes it didn't always work that way. Sometimes God has different ways of doing things. You know, a jigsaw puzzle is not straight up and down. There are curves to it. I guess most of what I've done are rectangle. I'm sure there's some that are different shapes, maybe squares and different things. The ones I've worked on have been rectangular. But growing up in a, in a Christian home is the first part of my jigsaw puzzle. You know, we were taught the Word of God. We were taught to, to pray before our meal. We were taught to pray before we went to bed. You know, to trust God with everything that we experience, we have to trust God for it. So, I, I had a good foundation in the Bible. Went to Sunday school, went to vacation Bible school, went to church camps, all these things, but... Another part of the jigsaw puzzle is when you grow up and you get around other people, your older peers, sometimes family, other family members that have an uh, alternate lifestyle or a different type of a lifestyle that may lead you away from God, lead you away from truth. And the devil, if he had his way with each and every one of us, we wouldn't be here today. We'd be out either recovering from last night or we'd be trying to do something today to, you know, fill up that void in our heart. We all have a void in our heart. We're, we're conceived in sin. There's not a single one of us who has not experienced sin. But as you grow older, hopefully somewhere along the line, someone has taken the time to share Jesus with us. Maybe the little child, maybe that's the only thing you remember, the little child, you know, somebody saying Jesus loves you, or, you know, God bless you, or just pray before we eat, or something about Jesus or about God that would inspire you later on in life to, to contemplate upon these things. Now, me and my grandparents, they, they were older, they were in their 60s when I first met them, I guess, when I was a kid. I always remember my grandfather, you know, sitting in his recliner, you know, reading the Bible or studying a Sunday school lesson or doing something. You know, they always pray before they ate. They're always doing something about church. My dad was not around very much. He, he worked driving cross country trucks. He wasn't around very often, or he was working on the highway department. So he was gone all summer. So I pretty well left it to my own devices. And eventually, I got to doing things that. I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Not things that God wanted me to do, not things my parents wanted me to do, but I was easily influenced by other people. You know, my peers, they were smoking, so mm. when I was 15, 16, I started smoking. Mm. Which would be cool, you know, to fit in with the in crowd. Mm -hmm. How many of you ever tried to be with the cool kids or, you know, something? I never was a cool kid, but I tried. <laughs> you know, I did everything I could to, to fit in. Yeah. But then there's all that other side of me that said, you know, that's not right. You see these cartoons, we have a devil on your shoulder here and an angel yeah. on this shoulder over here. You know, they're, they're good and evil fighting back and forth. We all go through the experiences in our life where we fight against, it seems like we're just being torn apart sometimes. We got to the point where drugs and alcohol were consuming my life. And if you've ever been in that lifestyle and don't anybody's been in that lifestyle, maybe family, friends, neighbors, something, that in that lifestyle there's more to it than just drinking alcohol and more to it than just doing drugs. There's other things that go along with it. And it got to the point where I wanted them more than wanted anything else. So I didn't eat very much, I didn't, you know, I, I went to work. I had functioning alcoholic. I could do my drugs, I could go to work, no problem. But it got to the point where I wanted more and more and more, and my paycheck just wasn't quite keeping up with my demands. <laughs> you ever had that problem? Nope. You have more needs and demands than you have money. So, this little brain started working on me, said, you know, your boss has got some money in that closet over there, you know. 
I, 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 they say breaking an entry. I didn't break in anywhere. I just climbed through a window. I didn't break in. Climbed through a window and I started stealing money from them. You know, that was for months and months and months. They never said anything. No one ever said anything about, well, we're missing money. Everybody knows what's going on. No one said anything. You know, after a while, your confidence starts getting built up. You know, I'm getting pretty good at this. Well, this one time they changed the system. Now, the witness door was open. I got through. They always kept it in a drawer. Well, the drawer was empty. Started looking around. He had a door there. So I kicked the door in. Ah, there it is. $500. That's not a felony right there. <laughs> so anyway, I got out. Hid the money. They didn't want to be caught with it. I hid the money out in this little pasture next to where I was working. I'd always before walked there from the bar. I went to the bar first, then walked over there. This time I, I drove. Get away faster. Get in my car and boom, boom, boom. The cop started shooting his gun at me and found myself in jail for the second time. You know, first time I was ripping off drug stores. This time I was stealing from my boss. And so found found myself in jail. That's not really what I they had a plan. See, I had a plan. Mm -hmm. I'd be doing drugs and all this stuff all my life, having fun, enjoying life. But God had another plan. Yeah. And sometimes God has to get you in a place where you can't do what you want to do. You can't run anymore. You can't do the things you have to. You have to focus on what God wants. Mm -hmm. So I was in this little, this little town, little jail, in a little cell by myself. Nothing to do. Just sit there. So I asked him, do you got any kind of books I can read? Well, they have First Blood and all these other kind of books, you know, about <laughs> killing and things. I started thinking, no, that's not a real good thing to have in jail. So finally I got to the place you know, where I wanted to be in a, in a cell with some other people so we could you know, kind of play cards and do different things. Got transferred over and we was making um, hooch in the jail and trying to, trying to make some homemade wine or whatever. We got caught every time and doing things. But you know, I, the, the evil in my heart was still there. <laughs> But God is God is working behind the scenes. Yes. So every Sunday afternoon, this preacher and the youth pastor would come to us. You know, they they talk to us. Well, we were tough. So we sit with our backs to them. You know, smoking cigarettes. You know, going, okay, I don't want to hear this. You know, hmm. but the word keeps getting through. The other part of the jigsaw puzzle is God is putting God's word where it needed to be. So, on my birthday, Super Bowl Sunday, I was in jail. No TV. Can't watch Super Bowl again. <laughs> Talk about jail. Talk about prison. Oh, horrible. But you know, the preacher and the youth pastor kept coming to us every Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Same thing over and over, you know. You know, God here for a reason. You know, it wasn't here because you were ugly. You weren't here because you had a bad hair day. You weren't here because, you know, you were jaywalking. You did something you weren't supposed to do. You know, and sometimes he said, you got a monkey on your back. You just can't shake it. Well, the drugs and alcohol were the monkey on my back. I couldn't shake him on myself. You know, it's like smoking. Smoking, quitting smoking was easy for me. I did it thousands of times. <laughs> you know, I I was an equal opportunity offender with alcohol or drugs. I didn't care which I had, just I'd have one or the other. So locked him in jail. It was a whole lot harder to get him. I didn't have anything. So February fourteenth, nineteen eighty three, I got down on my knees beside my. We had, we had a little. Each one of us had a had a little room we slept in. One of the big deal we everybody had a, had their you know bunks in. We each other had our own sleep room. But the word of God got to me. You know, you know so I got on my knees, 
You know, they said, uh, John 3 16. How many know what John 3 16 mm -hmm. is? For God so loved the world, not, not this physical world, but us. God so loved me, loved you, each and every one of us. But he said, he said, Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, to die on the cross, we might have eternal life. Amen. You know, I remember that from grades, from our elementary school, you know, when I was growing up from Bible school and uh, Sunday school. I remember that. I remember that we've all sinned to come show the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Mm -hmm. The gift of God eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, the way of the sin is death. But the gift of God, yes. eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. I got down on my knees. I said, God, if you really are who they say you are, then forgive me. Clean me up. You know, take all this, this desire, this junk, all this stuff away from me. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, the jigsaw puzzle had just been chunked all over the place, you know, and trying to find pieces, trying to put it all together, my life was falling apart. Mm. My wife had left me for somebody else, you know, and that, that got me going crazy, and, you know, I couldn't see my son like I wanted to, and, you know, it just, now it's like, I wish the kid to go away, but, you know, it's one of those things that we all have something in our life. It may not be drugs, it may not be alcohol, it might be immorality, it might be gambling, it might be going fishing instead of going to church. It could be whatever you put in front of God mm -hmm. is your idol, it's your, it's your sin. And just because we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior does not mean we're perfect, does not mean that we don't sin. But we have an advocate with the Father. We say, Jesus, forgive me. And he does. See, one of the scriptures I learned when I was growing up, Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yes. If you don't know what the word says, you're going to be like Eve when Satan came to her. And he said, you know, didn't God say you could eat all the fruit of the trees? He says, yes. Except for the through the tree in the center of the garden, and we can't eat that. Right. The tree of knowledge, good and evil. Because mm -hmm. that's not no. If you eat that, then you'll be as God. You'll know good from evil. So Eve was deceived. She got the apple or fruit. Everybody says it's an apple. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Saw that it was good to look at. Took a bite of it. It was tasty. Mm -hmm. So she went and told Adam. You know, then he did the same thing. Then they realized they were naked. They hid themselves. Mm -hmm. They covered themselves with fig leaves. Mm -hmm. The guy used to come down in the cool evening, you know, and, and fellowship with them. This one time he couldn't find him. So he said, Where are you? Well, we knew we were naked, so we hid ourselves. Satan will lie to you about anything and everything. It makes no difference. Mm -hmm. Satan is going about as a roaring lion, seeking who may devour. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, if we don't know the Word of God, we're going to hear something that sounds almost right, but just a little bit off. Mm -hmm. And we're going to listen to a lie and be damned. Mm -hmm. So, in 1 John 2, 15 and 16, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Yeah. Now, Pastor always goes to the easy read version, so I'm going to try it. <laughs> Don't love this evil world or the things in it. If you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Mm. This is all there is in the world. Wanting to please our sinful selves. Yes. Wanting the sinful things we see and being too proud of what we have. But none of these come from the Father. 
They come from the world. Yeah. Well, Proverbs sixteen twenty five. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The Amplified, Amplified Version says, There is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him. Mm. But at the end of it is the way of death. Yeah. Mm. So, we have a choice. Mm -hmm. We can either listen to the Holy Spirit who God has given to us as our conscience. Yeah. If we do things wrong, we know there's we did it wrong. We know that it's not right. We have this little voice in your head that says, shouldn't do that, don't do that. But sometimes we think, you know, I got plenty of time. There are so many people in the cemetery today who thought they had plenty of time yeah. to get things right with God and didn't make it. That's right. When my first wife and I were living in this little town, I was growing this little weed, I had a garden. Well, I had a couple of weeds in my garden that I was cultivating, but I'm not sure exactly what they were called, I'm not going to lie. I'm not lying to you. Anyway, so, you know, uh, this, I harvested them, and this friend of mine came over, and he wanted my wife, next wife of them, big wife then, to babysit the next day. So we were smoking some, some joints and stuff, and he got on his motorcycle and took off, got killed. I mean, within 10 miles of my house, he was dead. You know, I always feel kind of bad about that. I mean, I wasn't a Christian, he wasn't a Christian, now he's dead. So my good friends have shot themselves, committed suicide. So I've hung themselves. You know, a lot of things, you know, and I, I look back and see the pictures in my mind, the jigsaw puzzles, how they're all being put together. And sometimes you don't see any rhyme or reason how these pieces fit together. But somehow God orchestrates this into a beautiful creation. You know, after my first wife and I, we, we got divorced. You know, I jumped right back from the fire to the Frying pan or vice versa, however the saying goes. You know, I got met, uh, got divorced in October. By March, I had my first date with my wife. Now, I didn't, I didn't even ask her out. Her, her best friend asked her out for me, but we went to a youth rally. You know, our very first date, we took her two kids to a youth rally. You know, the next night we went to her church. We went to a, a revival. This is all after I got saved, you know, and started really serving God. I was hungry. I, want, I wanted to be in church. Every time the church doors were open, <coughs> that's where we should be. Yeah. Every time we have an opportunity to be in God's house, we need to be there. We shouldn't be looking for excuses not to go. No sleep in late. I'll watch it on the internet or watch it on TV. Yeah. You know, we should assemble ourselves together. Yeah. Even as time grows short. So, before I accepted Jesus, I was like the, the sheep that had gone astray. He said, How thank you, the man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray. Does he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seeketh that which is astray? And if so, be that I find it, very soon he rejoices more of that sheep than the ninety and nine which went not astray. Jesus sought me out. I wasn't looking for him. He sought me out. He sought you out. He's seeking you out. He's, he's looking for you. He's calling your name. He knows you personally. He knows you intimately. He knows you better than you know yourself. There's nothing in you that he doesn't know about. But Satan knows the same things. When you start thinking about different things, he's going to start amplifying those thoughts to where you start. Because no one ever wakes up going, I'm going to rob a bank today. You know, if you're going to rob a bank, you're going to think about it, you're going to plan for it, you're going to look for opportunities, you're going to make a pattern. If you're going to go do something else, you're going to go murder somebody, you're going to plan something usually. I mean, sometimes things happen, but you shouldn't be in a situation where that happens. 
that Jesus, you know, when I thought my life was going straight, God put a curve in it. You know, the corner of the jigsaw puzzle. You know, I turned my life around for Jesus. Amen. There comes a point in your life where you have to make a decision. Am I going to go straight mm -hmm. to hell? Or am I going to make a turn and go towards Jesus? Am I going to accept Him as my Lord and Savior? Or am I going to reject Him? Because mm -hmm. one day we're going to stand before God Almighty in the judgment. And He's going to ask us. This is, you know, in my thinking, you know, why didn't you accept me? No one, no one told me. I had other things to do. I thought I would have more time to do what I wanted to, and I would accept you later. We all have excuses. They're all like armpits, and they all stink. All right. <laughs> but no matter what our excuse is, it's not going to hold up in front of God. Amen. You know, if you don't have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you stand before God Almighty, He's going to say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I know you not. And I do not want to hear those words. And I don't want to have anyone that I know look at me and say, Why didn't you tell me about Jesus? It's so easy to just say, Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. I'll pray for you. Let's pray together. But I got to a point where I had to cast all my care upon Him. Yeah. Yeah. So it says, first of all, 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7 says, Humble yourself therefore unto the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him for he yeah. cares for you. When I knelt beside that, that bed, that bunk, you know, I poured my heart out. I called to God. I cast everything on him. Yeah. And, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me that when they quit drinking, quit doing their drugs, they always had this itch to go back to do it. They always had the mm -hmm. desire to go back to it. They always had, you know, the desire. Mm -hmm. Well, I can honestly tell you. I can't stand the smell of alcohol. I can't stand the smell of cigarettes. And I have no absolutely, absolutely no desire to do the drugs again. I mean, once in a while I have this little voice in my ear that goes, well, it'd be nice to sit back here, you know, on this nice sunset day and smoke a joint, you know, and just kind of watch it. And, no, we ain't doing this, you know. I've already gone through hell. I'm not going to go through it again. <laughs> So no matter what your life is composed of pieces what pieces wise mm -hmm. you have to come to the realization at some point in your life either I'm going to allow my life to remain a jumbled mess of jigsaw puzzle pieces mm -hmm. or allow God to put your pieces together for you because well, yeah. I couldn't put that puzzle together mm -hmm. I tried there's a lot of pieces missing. If you ever had to a puzzle, puzzle, a crossword puzzle, and you couldn't think of the words, mm -hmm. or a jigsaw puzzle, you know, and you couldn't find the pieces that are missing. Yeah. Jigsaw puzzle with pieces missing is is incomplete. It's not a yeah. picture. Yeah. And without Jesus, your life is incomplete. Yeah. It's imperfect. There's there's things missing in your life, and you're gonna keep searching for things. To fill that void. Yes. Because you come to a place in your life where I used to go, to, when I was a kid, I used to go to the altar every Sunday, you know, and pour my heart out and confess my sins. And we had the old fashioned altars down here in the front. You know, and I'd go there and I'd cry and I'd cry and cry and ask God to forgive me and go to, go to school the next day and kind of like a spiritual ADHD. And, I'd be doing that and I'd say, squirrel, I'd be going this way, you know, or something else. Something would draw my attention away from God, and I'd go this way. And I'd go back to the altar, and back. You know, I couldn't do it by myself. And if I had not been, if the pastor that came to see me wasn't a spirit-filled Christian, 
and I may have gone to a, another church that didn't preach the full gospel of Jesus Christ, I may not be where I am today. But you have to have the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. Not just bits and pieces of it to make you feel good. Not just enough to know the word, but you have to have the intimate first-hand experience of salvation in your life. There's a song that uh, sung, you know, Stairway to Heaven. Mm -hmm. There's also Highway to Hell. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. the question is, which one are you on today? Mm -hmm. Are you on the right road to heaven? Mm. Or are you on the great big wide road to lead to hell? That, that, that's the easy one. You don't have to do anything mm -hmm. and then be on that road, be on a fast track to hell. Yeah. If you want to go to heaven, if you want your life what God wants it to be, it's going to take some effort. Yeah. You're going to have to sacrifice the things of your life that you mm -hmm. that are wrong. Pastor keeps saying that when he asked God to to get rid of all those enemies and stuff, you know, his friends and stuff start going away. So the family starts going away. When I said to Jesus Christ, the only friends I had were drinkers or people who, who did dope and stuff. I didn't know anybody else. You know, and so then when I got out of jail, I went back to the same little town, less than a thousand people where I got arrested. And everybody looked at me like, What'd you do? Why'd you do it? You know, then I had the opportunity to share Jesus Christ with them. But I also had the opportunity to share Jesus Christ on the witness stand when I went to, to get out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> they put me on the witness stand, you know, he asked me these questions, you know, why should we let you out? I said, because I found Jesus Christ in jail. You know, if I could find those transcripts, I'd, I'd try and get them. But, you know, it's on record that I told the, the court that I found Jesus Christ. Well, the jailers, he went to the church that I went to occasionally mm -hmm. later on. He goes, jailhouse religion. I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. People get to jail. They say, God, forgive me. Get me out of here. I'll never do this again. I'll live for you. And as soon as you get out, squirrel, you go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, but and working in the, in the ambulance, we go to the jail and check out people, hear that clank to those doors. From 1983, the last time I, when I was in jail, I still hear that clank, and it still sends shivers down my back. I don't want to hear those anymore. But you know, Paul and Silas were in jail, in prison, in the inner prison. And it's not because of sin. It's not because something they did that was wrong. Right. They did it for Jesus. Yes. They stood it for Jesus and the people of the, of the world didn't like it. They were preaching the gospel of a Roman prison. Mm -hmm. They could have said, all right, why did you forsake me? Kind of like Jesus did. Oh, Father, why has thou forsaken me? They could have done the same thing. But no. The midnight hour. Begin to shout and praise and sing glorious praises to Him. You know, and people in the jail start hearing it. You know, you know, I've seen pictures of the inner prison. You know, it's not like it is today. They don't have color TV. They didn't have all the running water. It was, it was nasty. Yeah, I'm sure there was rats and there's probably all kind of stuff in there. But yet, they didn't look at their circumstances. Yeah. They had an opportunity to praise God through it. You know what I've come to realize in other parts of my jigsaw puzzle is that when things don't always go the way I want them to, mm -hmm. I'm trying to put the pieces together, they don't always fit. I've learned to trust God. Yeah. I have learned to trust God through all the problems. We had a I have I had a AMC Hornet. Gas gauge didn't work. <laughs> We go into a youth rally. We had, we had five or six people crammed in that little tiny car. <laughs> and, you know, the youth group is going to put gas in my car, so I didn't want to just fill it up. You know, I knew how much gas it was going to take to get me there and back. Well, we got there just fine, had a great service. 
stopped at the convenience store to get some to drink and he said, do you some gas in your car? No, we're good, we're good. We got this little town called Ringgold, Texas. If you look on the map, you'll find it about that big. <laughs> and I was probably 25, 30 miles from home. And car dies. There's no noise. There's there's nothing. Put the gas. There's nothing. We all, you know, our pa my pastor was with me. Youth, youth pastor was with me. You know, and a couple of three other people. You know, that were Christians and a couple of in the back that weren't. And we started praying. You know, and that car, as God is my witness, that car started. You know, we got to this, this hill, and. If you remember the children of Israel, they crossed the rivers and stuff. They put uh, rocks and stuff. And they said, "Why are you put this?" So there are generations to come. You'll see these these monuments. These you'll see. This is what happened here. This is what happened over here. Well, I can take take you to these places where this happened. And there used to be an oil derrick out here, and it went up this hill and started coming down and it died again. <laughs> Start praying. Got to No Corner, Texas, put some gas in the car. I'm not going to tempt the Lord anymore. You know? We're good. So, you know, and there's times in my life that I, I can't imagine how things worked out the way they did. We had no money. But yet God provided food for us. Amen. God provided electricity for us. God provided housing for us. God provides for us because we put our faith and our trust in Him. Satan never did that for me. Yeah. Never one time. Never one time to say, Satan say, if you'll do this, I'll give you a fancy house. You know, a lot of people who aren't Christians have fancy houses. Yeah. If you think about the rich man and Lazarus. Yeah. Lazarus was poor. He was a beggar. Sitting at the gate. You know, and he was eating the crumbs that came from Lazarus' table. Lazarus was he fared sumptuously, the Bible said. Yeah. Lazarus died, was carried up in Abraham's bosom, or the the bigger did. Lazarus he died, he went he went to hell. And or the other way around it mixed up. But the rich man saw Lazarus over in heaven, he goes, have any tend some cool water over here, do his finger in water to cool my tongue. He goes, no, we can't do that. We'll send him back to, he to he uh, earth and tell my brothers about him. They won't listen to him. Right now is your opportunity to accept Jesus Christ right now. You may not have another opportunity to accept Jesus. A friend of mine who got on a motorcycle wound up being killed. He didn't have a chance after that to accept Jesus Christ. We don't know what's going to happen to him when we walk out this door. We're not guaranteed another minute. Come on, another breath. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's many times I've gone to uh, 911 called and someone was fine one minute, they were dead the next. Mm -hmm. So when we wake up in the morning, our first thought should be, thank you God, thank you Jesus for another day that I can serve you, I can worship you. When you see people in, in, in town, share Jesus with them. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what part of their puzzle is missing. We don't know what kind of misfigured camp trying to get pieces together they're going through. You know, we can put a smiling face on and everybody thinks everything is hunky-dory. Everything is just fine. But inside, we're falling apart. We're just screaming for help. Someone help me. You know, people are searching in all kinds of things, trying to fill that void. And if that void is not filled with Jesus, yeah. the only thing it can be filled with is evil. Yeah. And Satan will torment you. He will trick you. He will deceive you. He will... Do everything he can to keep you from serving Jesus. There's nothing he wants more than to see you 
join him in hell. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Whosoever. That's not just the rich, the famous, the good looking. I had to put something in there. You know, there's, there, there's not a single one of us who is, is so special we don't have to accept Jesus Christ if we go to heaven. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can accomplish in this life that's going to earn us a place in heaven. That's it. We can't buy our way. That's for sure. Hmm. The smartest people in this world who think they know everything. The Bible says God uses the simple things of this earth mm -hmm. to confound the wise. Confound the wise. They can't comprehend the simplicity of accepting Jesus Christ. Right. It's so simple it baffles people. I mean that's all I have to do is accept Jesus Christ as my Savior? Mm -hmm. Romans 10 verses 9 through 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. Yeah. That's it. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All we have to do is believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He went to the cross. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. He rose again. If we believe on Jesus Christ, that blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary yes. will cover our sins. I saw a pastor one time took a, a wooden cross and everybody wrote something on their their life, you know, what they did, a sin, on their on a piece of paper, turned it backwards so no one else could see it, and nailed it to that cross. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Initialed the back of your paper. Mm -hmm. You literally took that piece of paper off, there's all these holes in there. Mm -hmm. Scars of life Scars of sin are in your life. You can't take them away. Each and every one of us has things in our life that only we have gone through that no one else has that you are able to reach someone else. Amen. There's something in your life, some jigsaw puzzle that fits yours, will help them find their jigsaw piece over here that fits, help them get their life together. So the pastor took, turned the cross around there was no holes. That's what happens when Jesus Christ comes in. He takes it away from us. It's like it never happened. There's a, a company that comes in and have a fire or a flood. And and they come in and clean it all up. And their, their motto is like it never happened. That's what Jesus does. When Jesus sees us, he didn't see our sin. He sees the blood of Jesus that he shed. So right now. I want each and every one of us to, to take a moment just to kind of contemplate where we are with Jesus. We're going to close our eyes and ask the Holy Spirit to just talk to us today. Father, right now in Jesus' name, as you are walking through this building, speaking to each and every one of us, I pray, Father, that you begin to, to open up our spiritual eyes that we can see what we have need of. We all have need, more of a need for you. There's none of us who have got so much of you in our life that we need no more. We need to be full and running over. So, Father, forgive me where I have sinned. And, Father, I pray that you will Forgive those who are here. Speak to them personally. Have them, Lord God, to open up to you. In Jesus' name we ask, Lord, that you begin to move in a mighty way upon their lives. They would accept you as Lord and Savior today. Father, we just ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
สุดท้ายสุ